All right, welcome to the John Show Inc. We're here to do a uh, a follow-up review on the Techniques SL1200. I'm sorry, SE, SL1210GR turntable. I, it's hard for me to get that 1210 instead of the 1200 because, well, I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit. But let's go over the turntable and my reviews. I, I did a comparison when I first got this of uh, the Audio Technica LB200 <clears throat> versus this one. And I did comment that the weight was almost the same, but I didn't take into effect that the other turntable probably has weights inside of it to make it weigh more, uh, to make it seem like it's more of a high end turntable. Uh, this one probably does not have weights in it. It's probably just the components, the extra components, which makes it heavier. Because <clears throat> the MK7 is a little bit lighter. Not much lighter, but a little bit lighter than this one. As far as playability, awesome. Awesome, awesome turntable. As far as sound, sounds amazing. Especially with the Nagalka MP200 cartridge. I mean, it's like, they're like made for each other. That This this cartridge and this turntable, they have the GR2 now, which honestly, I think it's just a way to jack up a couple hundred bucks to try to, you know, make some more profits. But uh, this is it, man. I'm happy with this turntable. I did have an issue in the very beginning when I bought it. Now, I purchased this from... Sweetwater only because they had a payment plan and I didn't want to pay up front cash uh, $2,000 for one of these from another website that I didn't really know too well and didn't trust um, So it's like Sweetwater is a big company. I bought guitars from them. Uh, I bought a couple of these guitars from them uh, Lots of pedals. I got this amp this Marshall amp and cabinet from them so they're they're a reputable company and if in spending two grand you want to make sure that you're getting the quality you're getting the shipping that's right without damaging <clears throat> and you could return it if there's an issue now when i first got it i was used to the audio technica lp200 with the uh the tone arm lift and with that one i'm going to zoom in a little bit here now i'm going to show you here with this one when you lift the tone arm, let me back it up a little bit. There we go. When you lift the tone arm, I'm, I'm holding this while I'm doing this. Okay. It lifts the tone arm. Let me back up because this is, you can't see it. Okay. Then I'm going to put it on its little armrest. Now, if you look, <clears throat> it's, you can't lock it. it. This little lock right here, you can't lock it because it's sitting too high when this is up. You got to put the lever down. It's got to rest on the tone arm rest. Then you can lock it. And and and, and with the going the other way now, if you want to lift the tone arm, now with the Audio Technica, when you put the the tone arm on the rest, you can lock it. You don't have to lower it. It could stay up. This little lever can stay up. And and therefore when you unlock it to put on the record, you just it's up automatically when it's locked. So when you unlock it, you put it on top of the record, it sits on on the lever because it's up okay so then you just <clears throat> lower the lever onto the record with this one you got to unlock it then you have to lift it up and if you're used to the other turntable you don't have to lift it up it's like a an instinct especially 10 years of using that turntable or whatever it was seven years you're used to it being up so when you put it on the record it sits higher than the record it doesn't fall up the needle doesn't fall on the record but with this one you have to put this lever down to lock it. Like if I'm gonna like pack it up and, and for a day or two and, and leave it, you know. Uh, so with this one down, I, I, I always unlocked it and I'm used to it being up automatically when it's sitting on the tone arm rest. So when I put it on the record, it falls and it would like damage the needle or the record. Uh, it, it took a couple times for me to get used to this one where you actually rem remember, you have to remind yourself to pick up the tone arm after it's unlocked that's the only issue i have i mean there's another issue that's not a technical issue it's uh it's a cosmetic but but i'll get into that in a minute so i had an issue with the tone arm where i kept trying to 
to it was locked and I kept trying to lift it up with the tone arm lever uh, just because I'm used to doing that with the um, Audio Technica. So I, the dampening would, would, would soften too much. And it, and it came to a point after a couple of times of doing that that the tone arm just won't go up or won't go up as much. It was like there was give and play because I wore it out from, from trying to lift it when it was locked and it, it wouldn't go. So it would just fight itself. So I had an issue with the uh, lever. I did find out that the 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 locking the mechanism the the lever that lifts it uh was a little bit faulty on the other the original unit I bought so I actually had to contact Sweetwater to see if I can replace it with this one or just return it uh because they only have the black one the 1210 they don't have the 1200 series and if you look you see my vintage receiver my CD player my phono preamp everything's silver my receiver silver everything's silver so i wanted to keep everything silver and looking vintage but i didn't want to pay cash to a company that wasn't reputable so i and i didn't trust and know so i ended up going with sweetwater with their payment plan and i had to get the 1210 i hate the black turntable i still hate it i bought this little light here so i could see the needle when i brush it with the with the little tiny um this little tiny brush See, can you see it? Yeah, that little brush right there to, to brush the needle, right? But at nighttime, in the day, you could see it, the needle, the, the stylus. Um, but at nighttime, you can't, even with the light, you can't see it. And it's so hard to brush the needle. And I do that every time I lift it off the record and put it before I put on another record or flip this flip to uh, side B, I always brush the needle and I wipe the record, record down. I'm, I'm a big fanatic with dust. I don't want dust. I don't want to hear it. I don't want it crackling. I, I just want a, a clean sound. Um, so I don't like the, the black. I hate it. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to stick with it and just deal with it until I can get like the, the 1200G one day or a different, uh, you know, I hear that uh, other uh, turntable companies are making, going back to making vintage wood colored turntables with silver. I'll wait till there's a really nice one like that and I'll get it. But this, as far as the sound quality, amazing. Amazing. It, it's, 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 it's dampens so well. I mean, if I'm hitting this, hitting this, I mean, it's anchored to the wall in my, my cabinet here. But with the LP120, the techniques, I mean, the Audio Technica, if I touch anything, if I breathe, it'll skip. If I, if I walk on the floor, it, it, it'll, it'll skip. And you can hear the motor, you know, when between songs or after or before songs. Um, this one, it's nothing. You don't hear nothing. The sound quality is impeccable. It's amazing. It's perfect. The only flaw with this is it's black. It's not silver. And I don't know why they they don't carry the silver one. Um, they say that that's their audio file line uh, uh, techniques, and they don't they don't give those out to just anyone they give it to certain dealers that's their excuse at Sweetwater but let me get back to Sweetwater because I, I try to contact people about returning and they say well we, we can help you with anything you want but if you want to do returns we got to send you to someone else so they sent me to someone else and they sent me to someone else and I got I got the I got the catch 22 I got the back and forth they gave me the runaround basically and I was just going to exchange it for another one because the uh, tone on lift was a little messed up but since they gave me such a hard time, I really had to like twist their arm and say, you know what, I'm just going to return it. I'm not happy with the product and you're not working with me on it. So I'm just going to return it. And I'm just going to take my money elsewhere and go buy a new one somewhere else. When I did that, I twisted their arm a little bit. Then, yeah, they said, okay, no problem. We'll take it back. Okay. But at first it's like, oh, I can't do that. You got to talk to the other depart the returns department. And it was just a big headache. And it makes me think, well, if I have to go through hell to return something, I'm not gonna buy it from them. Like the guitar pedals, I would much get. A, I would much rather get a guitar pedal from Guitar Center or from Amazon because you could re return it if there's an issue. Because when you buy online, it's not like back in the day where you go into the mall and you go into the audio store, the guitar store, and you could try stuff out and listen to it and see how it sounds and see if you like it and play with it. You can't do that. You're buying online, so you have to have it shipped to your house. You have to already purchase it and then see if you like it. <clears throat> that's that, that's the downfall of, of technology with ordering online. So it, these companies have to work, uh, adapt to that and they have to accept returns 
because you're not trying out. We used to go into a Radio Shack or used to go into a, a Bang & Olufsen or a store in the mall or something and you, the earphones. You could try on like 10 different types of earphones to see which ones you like and buy them. Or speakers. You can listen through many different speakers at Best Buy and buy them. <clears throat> but nowadays, everything's online, so you can't. You don't know what you're getting you, unless you've tried it before. So you're experimenting when you're buying. You're gambling. And it's thousands of dollars. So, <clears throat> excuse me, i got to keep clearing my voice. I'm sorry. I apologize. So, um, that's the problem. And, and if they're making it hard for you to return stuff, then they don't want your business. I used to go through hell to return a guitar pedal to Sweetwater. Their return policy sucks. They're a good company. They're big. Um, but but if you buy something, expect to twist arms and legs, and it's going to be a battle to try to bring it. And then you got to you got to pay for shipping to return, bring it back. Sometimes that's what they try to do with this turntable. They said, well, if you exchange it, we'll, we will cover the shipping. But if you return it, you got to pay the shipping. And it's like almost like they're trying to threaten me, you know. And uh, so I, I'm just. I'm committed to this turntable. I'm going to keep it. It sounds amazing. It, it works and everything. Um, but they, their return policy is just a pain in the ass. It doesn't suck. They'll eventually take it back. But it's just a real... you got to really fight with them. And you got to talk to people. With Amazon, you just click a button on your phone. And then you send it to the UPS store. And that's it. And you're, you're done. So if like you buy a record or a guitar pedal or something on Amazon, you can return it. No big deal. And until that policy changes, that's like the best way to go. If that policy changes, though, then you gotta, you gotta, then I'll just go. I'd rather shop somewhere else because <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of Amazon, anyways. Um, so as far as Sweetwater goes, yeah, it, returning is a. If, if you buy something expensive, I hope you get something good that you don't have to bring back. Same thing. I had a guitar I bought from them in the switch, the switcher on the guitar. Um, it was faulty. And I've tried working with it. I didn't want to have to bring it back because I had a problem with a different guitar. I had I had to return two or three of them because they were faulty. Uh, and it was a real pain in the ass. But but with the guitar switch, they're like, yeah, that was a long time ago. So um, you have to pay. They sent me a box and I have to pay for shipping. It's like a hundred bucks to send it back. It's like I, it's cheaper just to buy a switch and put it in, or take it to a guitar shop, a guitar center, and, and get a switch. Another thing with guitar center, if you buy something on their website like a guitar pedal. You could just go to the Guitar Center store, that they're all over, and you could just walk in and return it with the receipt, or, or the receipt on your phone <clears throat> when you buy it online. With Sweetwater, they don't. it's not Sweetwater stores everywhere, so you can't do that. So you're stuck dealing with them over the phone and having to ship. Um, so I, I go to Guitar Center first or Amazon first, and then if I have to go to Sweetwater, I will. This turntable... They don't sell it at Guitar Center, or they do, but there's no payment plan. I wanted to do a payment plan because if I didn't like it, I wanted to bring it back and have to pay out, you know, the, the full amount for it up front. Um, but th I guess that's the price you pay. Then you got to deal with a black uh, turntable instead of a silver. Uh, as far as the quality goes, it's amazing. Shock absorbing is good. I got these little. Um, I go all out. I mean, I could probably put these feet right on the wood. This wood piece of furniture and it'll probably be fine. But I, I did that with the Audio Technica because it sucked. It always skipped and the, there was no dampening. So I'm just used to doing this. Um, I will get like a plinth or something to put it on so it help, and then it'll look nicer, you know, aesthetically. But this turntable, the uh, 1210, 1200GR um, with this Nagalka MP200 cartridge is like, it's perfect. That is a that is right there. That's I got to take a screenshot of that. Because that is perfect. That's set up right there. I have no complaints. I mean, it's it's you know, it's it's spring loaded, nice and soft. It's really uh, it's nice. I I can't think of any other complaints other than the color and and the tone arm lift, which which I'm used to now, so it's fine. I did have the Nagalka MP200 on, on an Audio Technica uh, head shell, but. There's actually specs from the Technics um, manual that for certain size cartridges with this original Technics head shell um, that it tells you exactly what to set the height on, the height adjustment for what size cartridge you have. Uh, so I wanted to make it precise so the sound is the best I can get it. So I switched to this uh, head shell instead. Now, Technics head shells, they used to be silver. They used to say Techniques right across the front. 
they went to black. I guess I don't. I don't know why. Even the silver ones have a black head shell, which I don't like. And it doesn't say techniques on it. You could go buy one for thirty bucks on eBay, but it's not a true technique. So the the components inside, the metal parts, might not be like to par with uh, with the quality of like this head shell. But why doesn't it say techniques on it? Are they trying to save money? Are they going cheap? Are they uh, outsourcing their head shells to a different company? What's going on, techniques? Um, I don't know. It should say techniques on, on the head shell, and I would like it to be silver. Um, I could get over the silver, you know, if it's black, whatever, but it should say techniques on it. It looks like you're using like a, a cheap fill and cart uh, head shell on this turntable. The, the, the Audio Technica head shell looks so much nicer than it being silver. So yeah, that's my two my my two compl my three complaints because my main complaint is the black, but that's not really uh, that's that's uh, that's my choice. So I really can't complain about that. But yeah, the uh, tone arm lift, it should be where you can rest this on the rest with the tone arm lever up. That's how it should be, because that way you could just keep it up when you lift it off the record and just leave it up until you drop it down on the record again the next time. You shouldn't have to go up and down with the lever every time you want to lock it in place. That doesn't make sense. Audio Technica LP120 is a little $300 shit turntable, and they could figure that out. But this $2,000 Techniques turntable can't figure that out? I don't get it. I don't get it. What's what's? There's no reason for that, you know? It just makes it more complicated, and it doesn't make sense. They, they need to adjust that. Uh, there is a, adjustments where you can lower and raise how high it goes up because it was really high on the record when the tone arm lever was up so I, I adjusted that i'm happy with that but it's still you can't lock it with the lever up so that's my main complaint with that sound amazing it looks okay being black it would look a lot nicer if it was silver um i'm gonna switch out the legs one day the feet uh, i'm gonna switch that out as far as like the platter i never used a rubber mat i've always used like a cork or or like cork and rubber mix or felt, which is like like low scale. Um, but I never used a, a full rubber mat. I like it. I'm staying with the rubber mat. It sounds, the bass is more solid. And it's just, back in the day when my father, back in the 70s, had a Techniques turntable and his vintage system, I remember it sounded solid. It sounded like bassy and just really good. Like almost like like a cassette tape or a CD or the radio. It just sounded like planted, you know, on the ground and solid. Where my Audio Technica, I never. It always sounded like hollow. You know, it didn't sound like it was like when you kick the ground, thump. It, it went like almost like when you're listening to when you're playing guitar and you have two different amps and 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 you have to adjust the um, uh, what's it called the uh, uh the phase, yeah, like a phase adjuster like that. It's almost like the phase is out on the audio tech. It's not the phase. It's it's because um, it's just not a solid turntable. The, this one, you get that solid bass sound. It's it's back to like in the seventies with my father's turntable. I guess Techniques just has that mastered. Um, yeah, so I don't like the look, but I love the turntable. The sound is amazing. Just because the sound alone is so nice and clean and good, um, I, this would be my turntable. For probably for life as long as it'll last or I can make it last uh, one day I might upgrade to something if they came out with like a, a sawn deck or someone came up with like a uh, a vintage looking turntable that was like really vintage looking and nice but it was new oh I'd go for that in a heartbeat but they're they're getting there but they're not there yet so until then this is it and uh, I might even get like a 1200 MK7 just to have a silver one for, for you know for downstairs or, you know, um, in the den or something with my other, because I have a lot of vintage receivers and, and, turn, and, and uh, systems. So, but yeah, that's that. Uh, my next upgrade will be the uh, Phono preamp, which will be um, uh, one day the, the uh, S1, the, the, the two box S1 I'm going to go with. Uh, and then speakers as well. Uh, I got speakers now. They're the... Um, I got Pioneer SC703s, which I don't like at all. They're nice looking. They're loud. They're powerful, but I don't like the bass on them. It's just, it's weird. It just doesn't sound right. And then I got these uh, Sirwin Vega LP AT120s or AT, whatever they are. 
AT12s. They, I love them. They sound amazing. They sound good, rich, deep, bassy. I just need two more <laughs> and then I can have all four because I like running four speakers. I like the sound coming from all four corners. But that's my review follow up on this um, Technics turntable. And uh, I'm very happy. It's been, uh, I don't know, but somewhere between six months and a year now I've had it and I'm very happy with it. it sounds amazing. Um, I did have to return the first one um, only because of the tone arm. You know, it, it just it wasn't right. And I went through hell with that. So. Next time I might consider going to uh, someplace else to buy something like this. Um, I, you know what? If I could do it over again, I would have. I really wanted this turntable, and the prices were starting to go up more. So I wanted to get it before it reached two thousand, which I did. I got it like eighteen hundred. Uh, but I really, I, I really wanted the silver. Um, but at least I got this before the prices too. Now it's like twenty two hundred. It's ridiculous, and. Uh, the the 1200g if it's still under if it's under 5000 when i'm ready to get it i'll might if it's over 5000 cuz it's it's already 4300 now and it was just 4000 just recently so it's going up uh people are getting into vinyls and they're the prices are going up the demand's high now so i walked into a guitar center i guess it was in the early mid 2000 like 2005 2000 somewhere around there i saw an mk5 uh, Technics MK5 and I was like that's the turntable my father used to have when I was a kid wow and I remember it being an MK2 and I was like MK5 wow they got they, they're so advanced now and then after the 5 they went out of business for a little while I just stopped making them uh, because they were too good and they just were lasting forever which I hope this one is but I doubt it you know why would they do that again to themselves and sabotage their business so these probably will have something that will go eventually uh, parts they can make the wires inside a little thinner so they burn out quicker, you know, just to just to keep it coming back to buy more, keep their business going. I mean, it is a business. So they want to, their goal is to make money. It's not to make you happy and last forever. It's to make money. At least that's how it is nowadays. So um, that's my review. Any questions, feel free to comment. I'll get back to you if it's a decent uh, question. And... Uh, I'm I'm happy with the sound, amazing sound, very happy. If you don't want to spend four grand or over four grand, but you want a really good quality turntable, you like techniques, um, I I go with this one, the 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 GR or well, now the GR two, which is a little more money, but the GR, perfect. MK seven, I like that one. I think I went for the GR instead of the MK seven because the GR has like hard rubber in the in the the platter and everything for shock absorbing and the motor's a little better so i wanted to go with the you know the medium quality the highest quality i can get that's that's under two thousand this is the best turntable under two thousand dollars right now it won't be for long because it'll be over two thousand but yeah and with the cartridge it's amazing it's like day and night